evil lives forever. And Pendle Hill in England is home to centuries of immortal demonic entities brought to life by witchcraft. Here resides one entity more powerful than any paranormal or poltergeist activity we have ever seen. It left our team torn apart, half seeking safety at the church, with the others left behind to speak with the evil. We are at Pendle Hill. Satanic kind of operations that they were doing happened at this quarry. Most famous witch trial in British history. They begged for her release. However, the circuit judges at York said, I'm sorry, the king has actually signed her death warrant. The Pendle witches, were all executed in the city of Lancaster on the 20th of August, 1612, in front of huge crowds. I swear to God, I just saw like legs walking. A skull was placed on, on the actual grave to signify it was a witch. That's the first time it's ever gone off. Not willing to give anything up quite that easy. Um, it just said attack. It's referred to as the slate bed. And this is where she claimed that she came to meet with the devil. Elton, uh, could we leave? I'd really like to leave. All right, you know. Yeah, I'm out of here. Oh, okay. Just know if something happens to me. Look coming? after my family. Welcome to the Overnight Channel, dedicated to finding proof of the paranormal. Hey everyone, before this video starts, and I need to say this right now, this is the episode you need to watch all the way to the end. I don't want to give anything away as to what happens, that way you can still enjoy the video, but this is the one where the finale, if you want to call it that, the end of this night is remarkable. It made Corey and Matt leave to go find the nearest church while Dan and I stayed to continue talking to whatever it may have been. With that being said, I also want to remind you that December this month is the very last month to win an overnight investigation with Corey and I and the Overnight Channel. This is something we've been doing for the entire year. And December will be the last month that we're doing it. Two ways to enter. One is super simple. Just leave a like and a comment on the video. That equals one entry. The other way is to head over to SendItSociety.com, the clothing line that we run, and for every dollar you spend there also equals one entry. And with that being said, our December mystery box is available right now until it's sold out. Every single box includes brand new items and designs. You will never get anything you have ever ordered from us or even has been available from us in the past. We work really hard to make sure that every single box is the coolest, most unique possible box we can put together month after month and even another bonus on this one is one person who orders a mystery box is going to win the mural I had made during the mega prank war. So if you remember those videos, well, the real mural, I've had it for all these years in my garage, and I finally think it's time to give it a new home. Not only will one person win the mural, but also one person this month is going to win an overnight investigation with us. And beyond that, you're going to get a really cool mystery box for December. Thank you all so much for all of your support throughout the series and through Senate Society and everything else that we've been doing. And after this, we have Samsbury Hall, Poltergeist House, Ancient Ram Inn, Woodchester Mansion, Loftus Hall, and a secret video that will also be coming out afterwards. So without further ado, enjoy the rest of the video. What's up everyone and welcome back to the Overnight Channel. Right now we're still in our UK series and we are at Pendle Hill, which is actually on that side, but we couldn't miss this wonderful, beautiful sunset. Look at that. Hmm. It's very beautiful. It's very, it's very, it is. Oh, kind of looks just like you. Me? Stunning. Yeah. What makes you think the sunset looks like me? It's perfect. <laughs> this it was crafted by the gods. What else? It's also in the land of tiny penises. Keep going. Just like the sun, it has a hard time staying up. Yeah. It's because of the test I took when I was 18. <laughs> the math test, right? Yeah, the math test. The math test that you yeah. took, yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We came all the way out here because if you aren't familiar with Pendle Hill and the witch trials that happened here, if you know of Salem, everything that happened in Salem was based on what happened here. Wow. And you've been here before. You live not too far away from here. I live a stone throw from here. This place was my stomping ground for many years. When I first ever went to Paranormal, I was here, and uh, this place is nothing but haunted. Which is on buses, which walkways, which coffee shops. 
everything you see is based on witches. Because Pendle Hill isn't just the hill. No. Pendle Hill is the entire area. Yeah, it's the entire area. You're in for a surprise tonight. Wow. Oh, and they did, they did dub this one time, Pendle Hell. Not Pendle Hill. Pendle Hell. Pendle Hell. Okay. That's good to know. You guys should move away from here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, there's so many other places. He can, can live. he can only move however far away he can throw a stone. Yeah. So throughout tonight, we're going to be visiting numerous places that have historical significance to what happened here. So we'll be making at least four different stops, including the castle that we're at now, the hill, the forest, there's a church, there's a cemetery, there's even a quarry where the witches actually confessed to the rituals and satanic kind of operations that they were doing happened at this quarry. So we'll be visiting that as well. But before visiting any of the places, we have the privilege of meeting up with someone named Simon Entwithel, who is just touted as the most well-spoken and passionate historian about everything that happened. Here. He's the guy. He's been in numerous documentaries on all different platforms and all wow. major networks. So he'll be with us tonight oh, to tell sick. us the stories and the history. So anything we'd that's ever awesome. want to know, They'll be able to teach us. Should we go get them? I think we should. Yeah. All right, come on. All right. On Halloween, Pendle Hill comes back to life as hundreds of visitors climb to the top of it in hopes of witnessing a paranormal phenomenon. Yet all year round, ghost enthusiasts from across the world visit in hopes to experience the demonic activity that seems to thrive within the moonlight. The area is vast stretching for miles from castles to cottages, graveyards to quarries, all of which is believed to be haunted by those who practice black magic, satanic rituals, and made deals with the devil in order to achieve their desires. This desolate hilltop location became infamous from the witch trials of 1612, which resulted in the execution of 10 accused witches. On August 20th of 1612, all 10 were hung before a crowd at Gallows Hill in Lancaster, a hanging court that had taken thousands of lives prior. The Pendle Hill trials were an incredibly well-documented case of witchcraft allegations that became the predecessor to the later trials in Salem of 1692. In fact, the stories from here are so well-preserved, we were able to meet up with the historian Simon Entwith. He not only specializes in the horrific events that took place here, but as he speaks, brings them back to life before the most intense paranormal investigation we have ever had begins simon will bring us back 400 years prior so we may better understand what we're up against tonight welcome to the overnight channel please make sure to subscribe as we have brand new investigations and locations every week if you hear or see anything during this video that we do not please leave a comment let us know. Hello, sir. Hello there. How are you? Nice to see you. Likewise, Elton. Cheers, Elton. Simon. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, Doc. Nice to see you, Matt. How are you, Matt? Nice, nice to see to you. Meet you. Hey, Corey. Corey, what a great name that is. Thank yeah. you. I can listen yeah, to you okay. talk all day. You have the long. most soothing voice. Ever. <laughs> I feel like you <laughs> White deliver, Morgan Freeman. You could deliver me anyway. Oh well. <laughs> White Morgan Freeman. White Morgan Freeman. Just feel like when it can... comes to stories, guys, I'm the bloke to talk to. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you, oh. you should have to give all the bad news. And that's the world, what I was going to say. Like, oh, it's not an eviction. It's not that big a deal. You could literally tell me that my dog just died, and I'd be like, Ah, oh, tell me more. Oh, <laughs> tell me how. In detail. In detail. In brutal. Just give me all of the information. Uh, you chose this as the meeting point for everything tonight. I did indeed. We're actually in the very, very centre of the market town of Clitheroe. Um, this is a Norman keep built by the De Lacy family after the Norman conquest of 1066. It was used as a jail for a short period of time and by far the, the four most important people ever to spend a night here were indeed four of the Pendle witches. Anne Whittle, Elizabeth Southern, Anne Redfern and Alison Device. They were kept here for just one night before they made their way across this beautiful landscape behind us straight to the city of Lancaster where they were thrown into what we call Lancaster City Castle Jail. There they were going to wait for four and a half long months until the rest of the so-called Pendle Witches were taken from Pendle Hill which is just behind us and brought to Lancaster to put on trial. It's probably the most famous witch trial in British history. So the witches lived right in here. Oh yeah, yeah. We had a King of the Throne of England who was paranoid, absolutely paranoid. We also have a local magistrate called Roger Noel who knew about the King's paranoia. This man knew if he could in fact um, arrest these people and get confessions from them, 
he was going to curry favour with the King of England personally. Mm. And that's exactly what he did do. What is really confusing about the whole story mm. is a lot of the victims have the same name as the witches. Elizabeth Southern, 85 years old. She had defied the laws of nature because life expectancy in 1612 would have been 35 if you were lucky. Uh, there's no doctors, no surgeons, there's no dentists, there's no supermarkets. You lived off the land. Life was a lottery. She was 85 years old. She had a daughter called Elizabeth Device. She had three children. James, Alison, Jeanette Device. They lived at Malkin Tower on the slopes of Pendle Hill. Alison Device, the granddaughter of uh, Elizabeth Southern, had a walk along the length of Pendle Hill. She came across a Halifax peddler. When I say peddler, this man was called John Law. He was basically a walking salesman. Here we go from village to village, selling his wares. Uh, he met young Alison. Alison begged off him. Oh, please, sir, please, sir. You can spare just a few pins to pin me clothing together, sir. Just a few pins. Get away with you, shouted John Law. I'm not taking me pack off for you, last You've got no money. You're no use to me. According to John Law, the Halifax peddler, out of the mist appeared a huge black dog with snarling white teeth, glowing red eyes. The dog sat next to Alison. The dog turned to look at Alison and the dog talked. Alison, I can lame him for you. Lame him? Lame him, she screamed. Law felt this terrible pain down his left arm, his left leg, and collapsed in agony. And as Law's voice returned, Law shouted, I've been cursed. There's a witch in the forest, a young lass with your dog. I swear to you, I heard the dog talk. She didn't leave it, devil. She just confessed to a state cattle offence of witchcraft. And strange enough, John Law, the Halifax peddler, was about to forgive her, but not his son Abraham. Oh no, we'll have you for this. I'm gonna see the magistrates. And in doing so, he opened the 1612 Pendle Witch Trials. The local magistrate was called Roger Noel. He had his book of demonology. He was fully aware of the king's paranoia. He also knew if he could incriminate this young girl, he was gonna curry favor with the King of England personally. So therefore, Alison was arrested. She was brought to Reed Hall, Burnley, not too far from here. There she burst into tears and for the second time, inside 24 hours, she begged forgiveness. She had no idea. She just admitted to a state capital offense of witchcraft. He therefore gave orders that, uh, that Elizabeth Southern, Anne Whittle, and indeed Anne Redfern should be arrested and brought straight to Reed Hall. Um, Elizabeth Southern blamed Anne Whittle, and Whittle blamed all of them. Alison Device burst into tears. She was convinced she'd just lamed the Halifax peddler. Anne Redfern blamed them all. In doing so, the four of them actually admitted to witchcraft. They made the long, long journey from the Pendle region and into the city of Lancaster, where they are thrown into what's called the Well Tower, a very, very deep underground dungeon. You're in total darkness. They are chained to the floor, and there they are going to wait in total darkness, in appalling conditions, for a good four and a half months. In the meantime, on the slopes of Pendle Hill, Elizabeth Device is very, very concerned about her mother, Elizabeth Southern, and she organises on Good Friday what has gone down in history as the Good Friday Meeting. Word of the Good Friday Meeting reached the ears of Roger Noel, the local magistrate, and he thought, I want every single person who's attended the Good Friday Meeting to be arrested immediately. The ones that were successfully arrested were Jeanette Preston of Gisborne, West Yorkshire, Catherine Hewitt, Alice Gray of the town of Combe, Elizabeth Device, James Device, and indeed Jeanette Device of Malkin Tower, John and Jane Bullcock, a mother and son farmers from Blackhoe, and the real star of the show, a lady called Alice Nutter. They were all sent to Lancaster, with the exception of the two Jeanettes. Jeanette uh, Preston came from Gisborne, West Yorkshire, so she was sent to the beautiful city of York. Villagers went with her, and they begged for her release. However, the circuit judges at York said, I'm sorry, the king has actually signed her death warrant. She was dead before she even arrived here. She was found guilty of attending the Good Friday meeting here in Lancashire. She was found guilty of the murder of her employer, Mr. Thomas Lister. She wrapped his body in a clean white sheet ready for burial. And two days before the burial, she touched the sheeting and some fresh blood came through the sheet. This was classed as witchcraft. She made a plea of not guilty, but was found guilty in the city of York and executed at a place called the Shambles in York <coughs> on the 27th of July, 1612, in front of huge crowds. The other Jeanette, she was the little girl that lived at Malkin Tower. She was sent to live with the local magistrate, Roger Noel. She was only too happy to testify against her entire family. The jury consists entirely of males. No women allowed whatsoever. And there was no, no defence counsel because no one dared take on the King of England. To really help the situation, the little girl, Jeanette Device, 
was brought into the courts and James Altham, the senior magistrate, said, uh, Right here, lady, we had your testimony against these three witches. She told the court how she'd seen these dogs arrive, how these dogs had actually suckled under the arms of both uh, Anne Whittle and Elizabeth Southern. Elizabeth Southern, this eight, five-year-old lady, she died before the trials began. Young Alison was brought in and Alison, she was convinced that she had indeed lamed John Law, the Halifax peddler. Uh, she freely accepted her guilt. But the judges who saw Mr. Law in court that day said, is there any way you can reverse this curse? Only my grandmother can do that, sir. And she is dead, sir. Anne Whittle came in and Anne Whittle uh, was described as a skeleton in rags. She freely admitted to the murder of Anne and Robert Nutter, Hugh and Anne Moore and John Device by again having this dog called Fancy, who she said she, she came across at New Church in Pendle at a quarry. In the court that day were three other people, John and Jane Balcock, her mother and son. The Pendle witches were all executed in the city of Lancaster on the 20th of August, 1612, in front of huge crowds on what we call the pillory, a long, long gallows. They had their hands tied behind their backs. They had to climb onto the gallows and the, then the stools were kicked up beneath the trestles underneath them. Alice stood there with the rope round her neck and she looked down and saw this huge crowd gather and she caught the eye of Roger Noel holding the hand of the little girl, Jeanette Device, and she shouted, I shall haunt you for the rest of your life. Then the stools were kicked up underneath them. Young Jeanette watched her entire family die that day. She saw the two inhabitants of Cone die, the landowners die. And as soon as they stopped twitching the pillory, Roger Noel said, goodbye. But surely, sir, I'm going back to that lovely warm house of yours, sir. The bed and the meal, sir. Goodbye. He had used her. And she made the long, long journey from Lancaster up the slope to Pendle Hill to a cold and empty cottage, knowing full well her evidence had claimed the life of the entire people at the so-called Good Friday meeting. But what we do find amazing, uh, that's Pendle Hill just behind us. It's been described as being very, very atmospheric, very spooky and very, very seductive, and some unusual things have happened. Well, thank you. The pleasure's all mine. <laughs> wow. uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a real pleasure to talk to you, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, thank you. Yeah, I feel, I feel as someone who knows as much as you do, and as grounded as you are, you said you've experienced paranormal things while out there. I mean, what, what are those things that you've experienced? I do two different tours. One tour is just pure heritage. Another one is working with paranormal groups, and there's some excellent groups here in the United Kingdom. They brought table tipping devices, they brought K2 meters, and every form of ghost busting device you can think of. What has happened on one of the, uh, few of those occasions, firstly, a human tooth came from nowhere and it bounced oh. off a table. Now, I thought this is obviously a guest who's reached in their pocket, but no, it was a milk tooth, a child's tooth. And uh, it was still wet and I got my torch and looked under the table, found it, and it was still actually wet. All the people on that tour were over 18 years old and uh, they came from different parts of the country and uh, it just bounced off the Ouija board. It came from nowhere. Do you believe that the traumatic experiences of the past have caused these hauntings on the hill? I believe in the case of Alice Nutter in particular, she's crying out for justice because that poor woman was um, definitely, to use a modern term, stitched up, um, falsely accused to appease the magistrate to get rid of her. Again, appreciate the time. No, it's been a Real pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you wow. very Thank much you. for kindly interviewing me. Thank you. Yeah, wow. of course. That's incredible. I think Thank it's you very much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Time we take a little trip and see all the different places of Pendle Hill. Awesome. Yeah. So in America, this is called driving on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> keep talking like that, I'm going to send you to your doom. But keep looking at me like that, you're going to end up riding this broom. Oh. Let's go. Slow it down. Oh. That's a cleaning utility. <laughs> <laughs> I've spent all of eternity mm. looking for a love spell. Mm. Just waiting for that one evening with a full moon. Hoping you'd come and ring my bell. Woo! Okay. Keep talking like that, Elton and you'll see something real soon. When I tie my shoe later tonight, I'll show you a full moon. <laughs> <laughs> they said I was dead, but from my grave I arose. I'm rocking eight inches, and I ain't talking my nose. <laughs> Seriously, like, eight inches? So these ones are nowhere near as old as what you think. These ones are maybe 100 years old. 
1950. The closer she, the closer you get, oh, that one's definitely older. Oh yeah, but the closer you get, the older they get. Could you guys ever live here? No. In the house that literally has a tombstone no. just two inches away? No. 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 You think it was free? No. What if they paid you to live there? How much? Ten thousand a year. What the? F no. Twenty thousand a year. I would pay twenty thousand to not live there. Are you kidding me? Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> How do I turn this into a business? Hold on. <laughs> Don't get me on. But I will say this: it's said that Satanists do come here to Alice's grave. Like um, like Simon said, on top of Pendle Hill, yeah. Satanists still go there to this day and perform rituals, uh, slaughtering animals, oh. and they do come here as well. That's why the, the villagers don't like anyone coming here. They, they assume, think. yeah. They assume you're a Satanist. Wow. I saw... I... I didn't know how to... Dude, it was like as if one of the tombs was a mirror and I saw, I, like I thought it was one of us, just like our legs walking. Like I, I swear to God, I just saw like legs walking, but it was, I thought I saw a black thing jumping around in there earlier when we were walking down, but I was like, oh, you know, with the lights cutting in between headstones, it creates shadows. So I thought maybe it was, but wait, but dog was getting like colder and eerier down here. But bro, like I thought it would, I'm not even playing. Like I thought that the tomb was like a mirror because I saw a clear as day, like us walking. I'm fresh. Oh, fresh grave too. That's not creepy at all. Not at all. I've actually never seen like a grave that hasn't been filled yet or recently covered. that I thought it was just one of you guys. There's no way Ryan's camera made that noise. That sounded like a pig snarting. Yeah. Well, Ryan was frozen. What was that noise? It was like a, it was like a, like a, like a grunt or like yeah, a like snarl. Yeah, like a pig grunting. Dude, that sounds like someone like dragging their nails on a tombstone. Don't know what that would be. We, we looked at the house over there. There's no lights on or anything. A grave. If they're in a wooden box. Could it be like an animal? Like I, I looked in a tree or something? I looked through the shrub, this little gap there, and I could see the house and there's no light coming from over there. It's pitch black. Yeah, it's just picking it back off. Sounds like a real big dog. I mean, yeah, I can pick that up on my microphone really well. Pick up what? The grunting noise. Wow. Like, don't forget. They were meant to have familiars and in the form of like wolves and dogs. Could be the, the, the dog, I can't remember the names. Yeah, yeah. 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 That sounds like a deep dog. Really big. What a crazy place to live. I know. I know. You have tombstones inches from your room. Well, think about it when the bodies are, are very dirty. Literally, the bodies are absorbed into the ground, which will be oh. into the foundation of the house. Yeah. I don't think I like that. That's what's trying. I was not to be buried uh, just away from Lancaster Castle, yeah. so they could keep it out of graves. Supposedly, her grave got disturbed, and she was dug up and brought here and buried here in peace. But they had to mark a grave of a skull and crossbones. Oh wow, and that's the story. Very twice. Yeah. Wait to see. 
house is great. Good as I am. Is it in the church? No. It was buried right next to the church. Oh wow, it's right here. Right here is Alice Miller's grave. This is where she was buried the second time. Yeah, the second time. First time I bring this back up. And then moved her to here. Just to confirm it. Oh, wow. The skull was placed on, on the actual grave to signify it was a witch. Wait, we saw those in the hellfire yeah. cave. There's one here. That was Paul. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you thought, we thought you were a crazy villager. I was like, just sit down like you're doing nothing. <laughs> With cameras. <laughs> With cameras. <clears throat> yeah, there's nobody, nobody around. Uh, many years ago, the graveyard was, was overpopulated. So what they, they decided to do was exhume a lot of the bodies and to take them out of the church. They used the path which was just down there leading through to the gate there. And they were then put in a mass grave. But we do get a lot of power, paranormal activity from where this spot was standing here through along this path to the, the gate where the bodies were finally left the consecrated ground. Isn't that where you guys were hearing? Yeah. Yeah. So all the scratching that we were hearing was coming. And we thought that was just someone's house. Coming from a mass grave. Coming from the mass that I didn't even know about. I didn't even know. No? Right? Yeah, cor corpses walk, it's known as. Right, okay. Yeah. Has anyone ever reported, like, the sound? Did you explain the sound that we heard? Yeah. It was like a, a scratching on, like, a car. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like a scratch, like a... Uh, some people describe it as almost like a dragging sound. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it yeah. was. We heard it probably six times. Yes. Almost like someone like kind of waking up for the first time in a hundred years. Mm. Like a, and then anyone else get chills? Right yeah, now? I just got yeah. shivers all down my body. And the clouds just moved from the moon as we started talking about it. Alright, so we normally have a rule where we don't do investigations in cemeteries. Mm -hmm. But I feel like these are under different circumstances. We were just trying to talk to one person in particular yeah. who had a really unfortunate series of events happen to her, mm -hmm. but perhaps she's still here and I don't know. And we're not going to spend like hours investigating here. This is just a real quick like, yeah. one yeah. tool, see yeah. if we can talk to her. And I don't think we should put anything on the, the, uh, around around the grave, and nothing yeah. directly on top of the resting place. Yeah. Maybe they be sleeping in the middle of the night, and you just be like, "Are you awake?" I'm just like, well, to, be, to be fair, I do believe that's him. And I'll set this up as well. And I sit on this bench. Because maybe if we, uh, like, if she's still resting there, and we ask her to make her presence now, maybe she'll rise up through. Yeah. yeah. First time it's ever gone off. Get away from it. Get over here. Joe. Is there a leaf touching it or something? No. Remember what I was telling you? Yeah. Last night I told him that that's it's the one device that's never gone off. And it's the one device now that I trust more than any other. It's also dropped a whole degree. That's not much, but. Alice, uh, we've heard a great deal about you and the incredible impact you've had 
and not only your community, but your story that's been told around the world. So we come here only looking to show our appreciation. And if it's possible to have a conversation with you to understand what it was like during your time and everything that happened, that would be an incredible opportunity to us. That's crazy that went off. Mm -hmm. I thought I heard a tap, but it could have been anything. Where did Paul go? He'll we'll probably be here. <laughs> if you don't want to speak with us, and we are bothering you and we should leave, could you touch the device that's on the ground? We're sorry if we're bothering you in your second resting place. We didn't mean to come to disturb you, but we understand that you want us to leave. Alice, you may remember me. I've been here so many times. K2 swiping. And I've always shown the utmost respect. We'd love to have a conversation with you. If you could, wherever you are, just walk through these chairs, and if you could sit, you could just sit on the edge of the grave, and we could have a nice talk. Oh, spiked. I'll make a seat for you here. Or you could sit down here. Just get real cold. But we need to know that you're here. I just got chills. We did travel a long way, thousands of miles. So we are happy to leave. But we just want to make sure that if you do want us to leave, we're understanding you correctly. So if you wouldn't mind activating one of the devices again, then we'll leave. And if not, we have another device that we can use to communicate with you. You okay there, Corey? Why do bells always scare the crap out of us? Maybe I'll walk her up. Maybe. Alice, if you're willing to talk to us just for a few moments, could you make one of our devices go off one more time? We don't mean any disrespect, and we hope that we're not bothering you. We're so sorry about the consequences you face just trying to do the right thing. Out of appreciation, we'd love to have a conversation with you to hear your side of the story. Yeah, it's okay, you don't have to be scared. Please don't be angry. We're not like the men that you live with. We have appreciation and respect for women. And although you were punished for using your mind, we would love to hear what's on yours. Would you like us to try and talk to you for another device? We can hear your voice. I'm going to get the device out, okay? We should have the flashlight. I just heard the other one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one. That one just went off at the same time. Is that the REM pod at the same time? The REM mm -hmm. pod and the music box. Yep, yeah, it's going off. That's right. If you put your energy into that, or if you touch it, it'll go off and make a noise that allows us to hear you or know that you are communicating with us. Because we're not able to see you, but we believe that you're able to see and hear us. Could you make one of the devices go off one more time to say yes 
that you can either see or hear mm -hmm. us. Thank you. Thank you. If this is Alice that we're speaking to, make the device that's on the ground go off and make the noise again. If this is another spirit that we're talking with, can you please make the music box go off again by walking near it? It's dropped four degrees since we put the K2 out. First time ever. We use that device in 15 locations. And it's never once went off. Never gone off. Yeah. It literally smelled like burning rubber. It's a device here. All you need to say is Alice. And then we'll know it's you who will speak to. Alice. As loud as you can, shout Alice through that device. Please. Please, what? What can we help you with? The trouble. The trouble. What trouble are you in? Can we help? I'm just hearing so many female voices, I like can't even spit anything out fast enough. I'm like, I've never heard so many clear sentences and just words coming through this. Really? It's not, it's like, it's really, I can't, like, say them all fast enough. And now you're taking that off, I've started again. These devices haven't gone off since you put that on. Really? Yeah. It's just nothing but, like, female voices coming through and coming through and coming through. And I, I cannot, like, pick one to say, there's just so many things. There's like not like one thing that's standing out. It's like just nothing but females talking. I'm gonna try putting this in the reverse if I can. I wonder if we have more than one witch here tonight. Mm. Well, she was never a witch though, was she? Mm. That's true to, to one story. Mm. Or maybe, oh, that has triggered something. I do apologize. I do apologize if I've called you a witch and you wasn't. But we don't know the entire truth. I'll put this back on. Maybe no questions asked. Okay. Can you confirm with us? Okay. like she's trying to tell us something. Or she's sitting up. Yeah. I've got a feeling she's, uh, we've got her attention by calling something she's not. Mm. Alice, if that's you, please turn it off. Or if it's not you, 
please walk away from the device. Can you walk over here and take a seat next to me? Alice, if that's you making our music box go off, can you touch the device that's on the ground again and make it beep? Maybe now I'll be able to hear whoever's speaking more clearly if they're above ground. Put them back in. Alice, we've only been able to hear stories about you because we weren't there. Can you confirm with us if you were or weren't a witch? I'm laughing. The laughing not a reaction. Is this funny? You're being naughty. Who's being naughty? Check your memory. What memories are you referring to? Set the other device off. And if you're not, turn that one off. What are you trying to do? We're trying to speak to Alice Nutter. Please tell me your name. Please. You just need one name. Not enough. What's what? not enough? What do you want in return? Is it not enough energy? Okay. That's there good. Go. It's like giving me a headache trying so hard to play here and here. Alice? Were you innocent? Did they falsely trial you? A little bit aggressive. Tragic. Someone killed me. Whoa. Whoa. Who killed you? Are we disrespecting you? Do you want us to leave? I scared him. If you say leave right now, we will take all our devices and we'll leave and we will never come back. We're not professionals. And we will never bother you again. Go ahead, go. No way. What? No way. Please, if you want us to leave, just say goodbye and we will leave. Quite alright, good night. Oh my god. My goodness. Oh my god. Okay, Alice. Bro. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. We're, again, we're so sorry what happened Have a great to you. Evening. What? You also Thank have God a great round. Thank God they're out. Okay. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you and good night. I hope you rest in peace. Rest well. <laughs> Bro, are you serious?
<laughs> Bro. Yeah, we gotta. I like had to like close my eyes and just like think less, and I could hear so much better. We just had a full conversation, yeah. like four to five replies. Everything you were saying was like an exact response. Yeah. We should exactly. probably leave. Yeah, so. we should leave out of respect. Yeah, okay. I agree. Could you imagine if it stopped once the moon disappeared behind the clouds? That'd be that crazy. That's, that's a good theory. That would be Because look at exactly, look at the exact angle. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just on. perfectly straight on. It's not even off to the side or anything. I mean, when you think of it's witches, what do you think of? You think of a, a witch on a broom in front of the full moon. Mm -hmm. Stop. That would, that's some seriously strong energy. Anybody see the sign? What? Nobody see the sign? This is apparently where she confessed to doing all of her rituals. Oh, jeez. All of her witchcraft and She confessed offers. to doing the rituals up here? Yes. Like the, she did the confession here or she did the rituals here? She confessed to doing the oh. rituals here. Okay, this is um, known as quite a, a, an active area in the Pendle Witch story. It's referred to as the Slate Bed. And we're not far from um, Old Den Dyke's home, which is just um, down the road to the... Uh, to the, the right of this uh, this area, this quarry. Um, and this is where she claimed that she came to meet with the devil um, and now allow um, her familiar to suckle blood in exchange for her powers that give her, um, for her witchcraft. So this is the actual area that she stated that she came to. And again, the moon. Yeah. And even when it's at its strongest point, it'll still be right on top of us, perfectly on top. Yeah. There's a cat ball there, uh, somebody forgot that. There's a cat ball? Oh, there's a cat ball, yeah. yeah. Whoa. I didn't even see that. <laughs> Someone was here recently. Relatively. They forgot it. I kind of... Or is it a fishing ball? Maybe they didn't forget it. Oh, wow, right there. It still oh. works. Wait, it still, still works? works? Yeah. yeah. No that, way. That has to be really recent. Like within days. Yeah. At most. No way. Wow. Someone brought a cat ball up here. Did you what? hear that? What? Evan. What? You don't hear that? Your whistle? Oh, yeah, that whistle. Somebody was just whistling. It was like a, literally like a, like a doo doo doo, but in a whistle. Like it, it literally sounded like it was from over that. Ah, yes. I really wish the SLF didn't die. It died? Yeah, it died when we were walking. It, it's so cold that it like crushed the battery. Party. Noon. Party. You imagine having the SLS Hidden here? Process. Hidden process. Huh? Imagine having the SLS here and asking the question that like, this is where someone tried to make a deal with the devil and it just a figure pops up immediately how insane that would be can we go pitch black for a minute sure sure i feel like that will kind of get you know we can go full night vision yeah let's do it if you guys are down for that of course Where's that again? we love darkness i know if there are any spirits or entities here that would like to communicate with us could you please put your energy or try to touch one of our devices that we've set up on the rocks around here. We've heard that this is a place where people have made deals with the devil before. Is that true? This is where people came to try and meet the devil. To this day, people still talk. I feel like it's over where elves is standing. So there's a chance that maybe not the devil himself could make an appearance. Someone beneath him could. We would 
know that, that there are not only spirits around, but entities beneath us. I just get the feeling something's open there. Yeah. Stone. Stone. No yeah. way. My understanding is that no negative entity ever makes an appearance because you simply ask. You have to make an offering. Okay. Some sort of a deal. Why else would he ever show up? I don't think they're gonna show up. I wouldn't do it. I don't think anyone's gonna show up. Rebecca. Betty. Rebecca and Betty? Betty sounds like an old name. Is that your name? For some reason, I have this feeling that, like, over where, like, that wizard face mm -hmm. is, like, you know, grave done or whatever, mm -hmm. is, like, where the stuff happened. Or, like, where something is. Any luck down there? No. Nothing. The music box set up? Yep. Interesting. The moon's currently hidden, and it is not one off one time. Mm. It's gonna be shown soon, though. Yeah, maybe like 10 more minutes. Ready sound is that good? It all kicks off. Not a single device has gone off here. It's a quiet move. Huh. Here comes the moon. It'll be a great time. My thought is not a single device has gone off. If out of nowhere, after I start proposing a deal, something happens, do we deem it coincidence? Many people have come here to make an offering, to make a deal. Those people are already your servants. They're most likely Satanists. Which means they already worship you. They believe in you, they empower you, yet I do not believe in you. I don't believe in your existence, or your powers, or your hold over humanity. But, if you could show a sign that you truly exist, then you'd have a new believer. We're off to a good start. This is gonna be some dark. I'm warning you. I might. Yeah, I don't like that. I might wanna. Yo, Captain Dunn Park. What? Captain Dunn Park. Anything. I might wanna. So right now you're next to my friends. How about you step oh, away? Could we Come leave? Come towards hey, me, Elton. Uh, could we leave? I'd really like to leave. Ain't nobody holding you here. What was that ground? Ah, uh, it says sorry. trade. No one didn't. It. Yeah, it said trade. You obviously said trade? Yeah. yeah. All right, yo. Yeah, I'm out of here. I might have to dip, is that okay? Yep. I'll yeah. stay here. All right, let's, uh, let's go. You just know if something happens to me. Do you Look after one? my family. It said who? It said who? Yeah. It said trade and who? Yeah. Let's go. I'll make the trade. And the who is with me. Right next to me there is a device. You could put your power into it. I would truly know you're standing beside me. 
and I'd be happy to make a deal. Perhaps we're just getting started. Just playing a little game and scaring away our friends. Which I might say you did a wonderful job. You're gonna have to do a whole lot it said more than that to scare me. It wants you. It what said is, you. It said you. Yeah. You show the screen. Shuttle. Uh, hold it there. I'm gonna angle. Picture. Shuttle and picture. Shadow? Shuttle picture scene. So you want me? Well, I'm not that simple to acquire to many places now around the world where I believe spirits have wanted something to do with me or some part of me. I'm not willing to give anything up quite that easily. Um, it just said attack. Missy. Make sure you're secure up there. You're going to attack me. Try. That's not even cool at all. Nah, dude, I don't f that. Nope. Hey. Hello. Anything kicking up in there? Yeah. yeah, it's actually not okay. Yeah, so we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do it. All you've done tonight is scare away my friends. Not something that that's hard to do. Impress me. Tile. Tiled. Child? Tiled. Make your presence known within these grounds. No, thank you. What did you get in there, though? Uh, you know the obulus? Yeah. Uh, absolutely nothing was happening, right? Not a single device would go off. It's been, you know, 30 minutes. Yeah. And absolutely nothing. It was dead silence. As soon as he started talking to the devil, saying that he wanted to offer something, and then he doesn't believe him, if he believes that something sets something off, REM pod fires off. Yeah. Six times. Abs after absolutely nothing. But now, if this truly is the devil, and you are stood near Elton. I will be able to see you. So show yourself. Gentle. Gentle. Are you asking us to be gentle with you? Are you saying that Dan's voice is a bit too gentle? Pebble, pebble. Let. Oh. Okay. Same time. Okay. Wow. Bring your energy up here. Uh, bunny. Or is that the place in which the deals were made? You want me to bring myself down there? I'll bring myself down. Eleven twenty. Hold on. Batteries. What? Oh, it said batteries. It said batteries. Catball! 
temple again. As I come closer. Is that you? If it is, set off the other de other, other device, please. I know it's cold, but man, my nose is dude. I'm fine. Yeah, my fine. nose is running. I don't know why I agreed to stay here. But <laughs> Oh, they went off and they're that far apart from each yes, other. Yes, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm like sick to my stomach right now. Yeah, like, I feel I'm, nauseous. I'm like real shaky. Be really careful what you ask for here. Beware. And it just said beware. I just said beware what you ask for. Or be careful. All right. Right where we think you want me. Couple. Moon is bright. It's at its fullest. Are you signaling that's the place you wish you want me? Weather Beth. Are you going to change the weather? Catball. Second one. That's the one that was up next to me that never went off. I just brought it down. When you step one closer to me, now set off the REM pod. The box in front of me. You know, we believe that this box has trapped an immense amount of negative energy throughout all of its visits. So I'm not sure if you've taken the energy out of it or if you could put more in. Yeah? Well, it's killed it. I think it's done. Yeah? I think it completely turned it off. Well, it did say batteries. So maybe it was saying it's, it's, it's drained the batteries. I know you don't know this, but we have a theory that this box has essentially been a, a Divic box of sorts. Because it tends to only go off so consistently that we've made the assumption now that the box doesn't go off because of spirits in the places we visit, but the box goes off because of the spirits that are within the box. And it only would go off in negative places. Are you confirming this? Did you just come in here and feed off of all the negative energy we might have brought with us? Tweak. Tweak. If you truly are feeding off of all of our negative energy and using it for yourself, could you set off two of the devices? Or have you simply just come here to feed and leave? Past. Past is in dead. Think about the last deal we made at the Hellfire Caves. We made an offering, a proposal. We opened the gate and then nothing happened. I come here and make a proposal, an offering. The activity stirs up, they leave. Reservation. Reservation. It yanks the power out and leaves.
if you're still here, you would like to make a deal for a bit more than a little bit of energy, show yourself again. We can talk about the possibility of making that happen. And if not, I'm going to pack up and leave. Strange that it feels calm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels very... Not like it was before. It was soothing. Almost like he got what he wanted and left. Yeah. Came in here, scared our friends away, took the energy out of three different devices and possibly more from another, and left. The ovulus was matching up perfectly with everything that was happening. Mind you, the music box never once went off. We had two very different conversations tonight. Still nothing. I feel calm. I didn't, when, when Corey and Matt was here, I was panicking. I could feel like this pressure feeling. Mm. And when these went off, especially the, the box, just after it, a uh, sen sensation of calmness. Yeah. I mean, it, the box isn't working anymore. And these were going off non-stop. I don't know if you want to talk about coincidence, but Evan, yeah. I originally didn't want to use this box. I wanted to use the other one, but it's broken in the bag. And this is the one we ended up pulling out. Strange sequence of events. Yeah. To lead to this box being pulled out. <laughs> I literally told Corey to put it back in the bag. Reap. Reap? Lord. Also, the moon's gone. I believe all the devices were going off and the moon was fully out. Yeah. Last chance. Travels a long way to be here. If you want anything more from me, Give me a sign. We're going to leave here now. We probably should have got the keys. No way he has the keys. Do you have the keys, Ryan? No. <sighs> So now we're just out here? Yeah, I'm not going back though. No, there's no way. Hey, Elton, how long have we been here for? I don't know. Yeah. How long are these camera batteries good for? Uh, should be on 240 minutes. Uh-huh. We haven't been here for that long, right? Nope. I got 10 minutes left on the battery. <laughs> it's taking what you wanted. It said battery. Yeah. Maybe we thought it was this. I think We've it was taken all the batteries. Everything. Took it all. Well, let's uh, save that 10 minutes of battery in case something attacks us on the way out. Yeah. Still works. Look at that. Clean. Okay. Clean. Are you telling us that we're leaving clean? Alright. Let's pack up. Got it. It's nice.
Did you hear that? Yeah. That's not wind, my friend. It sounds like the chapping of like dogs, like. Yeah. That was right there. Yeah. I can't believe it took all the energy. Cutting. Let's see, wait, keep rolling. Oh, yep. Just to make sure. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah. And that one, what about that one? No, that one's the worst. This one was going off more. Yeah, it's wild. Holy that was the one that was already here. I wonder if that's why it got left here. Maybe. They got so scared, just like them. Just right. <laughs> yeah. They left everything behind. That was what I said when we first got here. Maybe they didn't leave it on accident. They left it on purpose. Yeah, just just got out. Just did. That was really cool. That's insane. That was really cool. Just, um... Honestly, when we got here, I thought to myself, this is a big crap. Like we're not gonna get much. Yeah. Holy shit, was I wrong? I mean, like think about nothing went off for a half hour, forty minutes. I stand up there, and it boom instantly answered. You boys okay? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. That was really cool. What happened? Are you even allowed to touch a church anymore? <laughs> I didn't make a deal. You swear? Yeah. To S swear. God? I do swear. <laughs> <laughs> I do, yeah. I swear to God. Okay. You, uh, look, if I made a deal with the devil, you think I'd be burning right now? Wait, so what happened? I, I wholeheartedly didn't make a deal. I like asked to like show your presence if you're here, and then maybe we could talk about something. And that's when that happened. Yeah. And then as soon as you guys left, I was like, were you just having fun? We were you just trying to scare our friends away? And then the cat ball lit up and that was kind of it. And then I stayed up there and then the cat ball kept going off. And I was like, well, maybe you want me to come down to there. Or maybe that's where your offerings are made. And when I went down there, you know, long story, I guess, compressed, everything that he was getting on the obelisk and everything that was happening was that it just wanted to drain the batteries. So the Did red pod battery oh, yeah. drained. I literally like touched it and it didn't go off. Cat ball went off so many times that when I picked it up, didn't go off. Dude, you touched the rim pod and it didn't go didn't off. Didn't go off. Evan's camera battery was at like eight minutes or 10 minutes left when Ryan had the same battery and was at like over an hour. What? Yeah. What? So I think it just pulled the energy out of our devices. It keeps feeding into the idea that we should be bringing those like battery feeding. I know. I've been thinking that too. I've we need to buy like ten car batteries. Yeah. Well, we just could bring them on every. Message. Obviously, we couldn't travel to the UK. We couldn't just like check a bag and be like, no, just pull <laughs> car batteries. Yeah, just ten <laughs> car batteries with Tesla coils attached to them, just shooting at it. I promise, it's for ghost hunting. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I'm not stupid. You're a Tesla employee. <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll for sure be getting a baptism as soon as I'm back in the states for sure. <laughs> you just really want someone to dip you in water naked, don't you? Look, you know, if Jesus and I have anything in common, it's abs. <laughs> That's true. Have, have, he was shredding, yeah, he dude. Was shredding. Shout out to you, man. I think Jesus did keto. We're going to stay here. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to go to the motorhome with warm and we have food. Okay. That we're going to go to the motorhome. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you all so much for watching the video. And uh, next one up is Somsleberry Hall. Can we please go see White this? lady Look. as well. Standard. Look, I didn't, I didn't haunt these places, okay? You know I what? just picked them. <laughs> just picked them. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you also were all so willing to go back to Loftus after they told us numerous times how insane Loftus is. So, you know, let's just use these as a warm up for what is actually going to be the most demonic place we have ever visited. Okay. See you guys in the next video. Thanks See you guys in the next video. Okay. Bye. Bye.